اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد حسبنا الله نعم الوكيل نعم المولى ونعم النصير أعوذ بالله من الشيطان لين الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلاة وسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين سيدنا ومولانا أبي القاسم محمد وعلى آله الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين سيما بقية الله العظم روحي وارواح العالمين الله الفدا رب شره لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل لقطة من لساني يفقه قولي Life is three dimensional It has three dimensions to it When you define life there are three things about life Simply put in a very basic definition that I gave you Life is the opportunity to make whatever you want to become. It is the chance that Allah has given you out of His blessing to make yourself into whatever you want to become. And hence, Allah wants you to reach the highest level of pleasure, the highest level of happiness. That's Allah's intention. But He wants you to do it yourself in order that you appreciate it. In order that you value it. Things that we get for free, you will see that we don't value it that much. Anything in life, whether it's a jackpot, whether it's money, whether it's for anything. If there's no hard work involved, if there's no sacrifices involved, you will see that you don't value what you get. You don't appreciate what you get. And that's why... Allah could have given this. Don't you think that Allah has enough to give everyone? He has enough. And He's generous. So why doesn't He just give and not make us go through any trials or tests or you know, trying to do all these difficult things? Well, the reason is because He wants us to value what we get. He wants us to truly appreciate the blessings that we get. And that's why life is the opportunity that we have to gain those. And the opportunity that we have is a complete neutral opportunity. It is neutral. There's no prejudice. There's no bias. There's no sides. There's no inclination also. Allah honors the fact that you have free will and choice. And through free will and choice, you are able to choose. He has made different levels of choices. That as we grow, the choices become difficult. That's only because that's the nature of growing. When you grow up, you see that the choices are difficult. You know, be it. In, when you, for example, are a kid, the choice is between pizza and hot dog. Simple. You know, now at that age, it might be a very difficult choice. You know, but, you know, when we look at it in the larger picture, it's a very simple choice. Then when we come to high school, you know, obviously, you know, I can't speak about those choices. But when, as you grow, you will see choices that are made, right? They become difficult over time. And hence, so the reason that the choice is there is because the harder the choice that we make, the more that we're going to appreciate it, the more we're going to value it. So life basically is the choice or the opportunity that we have to make something of ourselves. Now, it has three dimensions to it. The first dimension of life, and all these three dimensions, not only do we need to know this, we also need to understand it, but we also need to believe in it. 
Otherwise, a person, for example, this is the problem that happens with a lot of mu'mineen who go to too many majlis. When you go to too many majlis, then everything becomes routine. Yeah, I've been there, heard that, you know, finish. Whatever you listen to, it's like, yes, everyone says the same thing. Okay, you know, uh, yes, I mean, there's nothing wrong with everyone says the same thing. All the imams said the same thing. What? Then are you going to get bored of the imams also? <laughs> you know? Like you tell uh, Imam Hussein, you know, that, oh, your dad said the same thing 20 years ago. <laughs> well, of course he said the same thing. What? You think we're going to change? You know? You're going to listen to the same things. It's, the more you listen, it doesn't matter. It's how much you believe in it. Right? Knowing it is not an issue right now for us. We need to start to believe in these things. To truly take it to heart. And, and that's when the effect is going to come into us. That's when you see our perspective of life will change. How we look at things will change. And our relationships will change. And everything about life will change. If we understand what life is. So the first aspect we need to understand of life. Is that life has a length. It has a length. And the length of our life is forever. It is eternity. It's infinite. When Allah gave us this life, it's not going to end. That's what we need to start believing in. Allah, you gave this life to me. It's not ending. It's not going to end. It's going to go on forever. Death is just a pit stop. Death is just a pit stop. Refuel your gas and go. That's all it is. But we made it so big that we lost our concentration and focus on life. Tell me the truth. Isn't death your greatest fear? I mean, when you hear majalis, and ulama, this and that, right? And that's it, they're talking about death, 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 you know. And now, for all mu'mineen who are there, you see that death is right now their greatest fear. Every time they think about death. In fact, they write it on trucks also. Maut ko yad karo. You know, you know back home, you know, right? trucks. What is that for? You know, why are they talking about death all the time? Why is there a fear of death all the time? Because we have made it so big. When Allah speaks about death, He's not talking about the end. He's just talking about your actual life to come. He's talking about life. When He speaks about death, He's not talking about the finish. This is the end and that's it. Now your life is finished. And inshallah, we go to Jannat and we get a recliner and we are going to drink and eat on that recliner forever. That's our view of Akhirat. You know? And how many of you are excited about being a couch potato? That's what <laughs> the idea is. You know, Allah says that in the Quran, you have recliners, you'll be sitting there, drinks in your hand, you know, and watching a show, you know. How long can you do that for? 45 minutes. 45 minutes, there you go. And that's the limit that we have. <laughs> After that, you know, <laughs> no matter what you do, Allah, I can't take it. You know, maybe in the past, people were capable of taking it, but I come from the 21st century. <laughs> There's no way I'm going to take it. It's too boring for me. and It can't happen. But that's the fear. That's the life that we think of. My friends, death is our greatest concern. Is it or is it not? Look at yourself and see that. And that is the mistake that we made in life. Death is our greatest fear. Whereas life should be our greatest concern. Instead of life being the greatest concern, we are thinking about death. And because we are thinking about death, now what happens is that deen also becomes like that. About, 
you know, good deeds, bad deeds, good deeds, bad deeds. That's what deen becomes. You know, because in death, I want to make sure that my scale is right. And hence, everything just becomes about what? Good deed and bad deed. And when it becomes good deed and bad deed, and when it becomes a competition between the good and bad that we have, now you see that even the good that we try to do will become messed up. Because we are not doing it correctly. And we are unable to do things. Why? Because we are looking at it incorrectly. When we look at life, that life is forever, we don't look at the fact that I did something wrong, I did something right here. So let me write it in this column and let me write it in this column. No, we don't look at it that way. The way that we look at it is from the perspective of movement. Where did we start and where are we headed? Where are we going with this? Where did I start my life? Look at yourself and see, I started at this point, at this level, and where am I headed in life? The pitfall comes, speed bumps come, but how much do you pay attention to a speed bump? When you are coming for the masjid, there's a pothole, let's say, or a speed bump. How much attention do you pay to the speed bump or a pothole? Just a little bit, right? A passing of, you know, I mean, but there are certain people who have like when they hit a speed bump or a pothole, they have a conniption fit, you know? Oh my God, you know, look at this, blah, 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 and this. Cursing it out, this and that. Now, what happened is that some people do it more. The issue is that when you look at yourself, how much do you pay attention? After a while, you forget because you're going somewhere. You're headed somewhere. You don't pay attention to these things anymore. The fact is that when we look at our life, we are looking at the potholes, we are looking at the speed bumps, we are not looking at the progress. That's why we judge ourselves incorrectly. We look at ourselves incorrectly. And then our deen becomes incorrect. So that's what we want to rectify. How does life rectify our religion? When it gives us the right idea, the right way of looking at things, then Islam also becomes correct for us. What does Allah want us to do in Islam? Why did He give us a deen? You know, to always make us like worried? Oh my God, I'll do this. Oh my God, I'll do that. Is that the meaning of being muttaqi? But honestly speaking, isn't that the idea that we got so far? The idea is that, you know, I mean, look at this, look at that. Always like, wait. Or is it someone who has a vision and he wants to accomplish that? And he doesn't leave that vision. He doesn't compromise that vision. And he's headed towards that. You see, there you see that progress, that, that progress report is more important than the wrong that I did. We get so fixated on sin or not doing something right, that that one thing now becomes a demon in our life to destroy all the other good things that we are capable of doing. One wrong thing that we, we do, there is, you know, when you look at, when you do something wrong, what is the idea? The idea when you do wrong is that you look into that, you see where you're headed, and you see the mistake you have made and the harm that it has done to you. Look into that. When Imam Ali alayhi salam, <laughs> speaks about the six stages of istighfar in Najib al he says about the six stages of istighfar, what does it mean, you know? Uh, I mean, what does it mean to repent and to ask for forgiveness? You know, it's not just, for example, say astaghfirullah. No, of course not. But what does it mean? It means that really looking at the wrong that you have done, looking at the effects that it has in your life, looking at where those effects are headed, and trying to then make a resolution with Allah that no, I will not do that. I will stay away from that because I've seen the effects it has on me. When a person realizes that, he has done istighfar. He should realize that, that I have done this and I see the effects in me. 
Look at it. Otherwise, if you do a sin and do not see the effect in yourself, then you know what? No matter how much istighfar you do, it's not useful. It's not useful. You need to know the effect it had on you. It means that you don't know yourself yet. How do you know the effect that it has? That's why we have uh, hadith from Imam Bakr alayhi salam. Where he says that istighfar cannot be accepted until you know the sin that you are asking repentance from. He says, Allah, you know, will not accept istighfar. You know, for example, you know, uh, let's say I walked past you and you say, sorry. You know, you said, just said, sorry, you know. You said, Mawlana, the holiness walked past, sorry, you know, okay. And so I ask you, oh, for what? Why are you sorry for? Isn't that the first natural question I would ask you? For what? What do you do? That should be sorry, that I should accept your apology or whatever. Why are you saying sorry? Oh, I don't know, I'm just saying sorry. <laughs> well, if you don't know what you're sorry for, then how can I accept your apology? When you say sorry to Allah, when you're saying istighfar and saying that I'm sorry that I did this, okay, then what are you sorry for? First, know it. Know what it has done to you and then say, Allah, I am sorry. Now I see what happened to me. I know myself and I see this wrong I have done and I see the effect it has on me. It has made me less than what I should be. Whatever it is, how? How did I become less? You should know it specifically. Analyze yourself that way. But you know what? Don't let that sin bother you so much that that's it, you know? There's nothing. Or don't make it so easy that, you know what? I can just keep on doing it. So sins are like potholes that come. But look at the vision that you have. Do you think that... I ask you something very simple, right? The people who were who died with Imam Hussein in Karbala do you think that they were Muslim do you think that they have not done sins before I mean didn't they imagine this you know I mean okay you know I mean there's some obvious example right I mean if the example I mean listen if, let's say, the Day of Judgment happened on 9th of Muharram. Let's say, you know, next day is Ashura, Imam Hussain is here, the army is here. And let's say, you know, on that day, everything finished. Day of Judgment happened and judgment is taking place. Where do you think uh, Hur was going to be? In Jannat or Jahannam? He's with Yazid. Imagine this. I mean, the person is on the other side. He's with the army of Tahut. In the army of Munafik. Really, my friends, understand this. The, the issue is not about one thing or two things that you did wrong. Don't look at life that way. That's the reason we get bogged down and we get tired of deen. If that is deen, anyone would get tired. Oh my God, you know, it's just a headache. You know, I, and I used to hear it. That was the situation when I was growing up and you used to meet the elders. My, you know, my elders used to tell me, how much religion are you going to follow? Look at Tawfut al -Awam. If you start to follow Tawfut al -Awam, you won't have time to do anything in life. Right? Because that's what they thought deen is. And that's the reason that they're afraid to put deen in their life because they didn't know what life is. And really, we need to understand things correctly so that deen becomes correct in our eyes. Practice becomes right. And understanding that depends on understanding life. You need to know that there is life. What is life? The first aspect of life is that we are living forever. Forever. Allah, you have made me and I am living here forever. Your plan with me is not for 60, 70 years. Your plan with me is for an eternity. 
And when we start to look a little bit into that, then you'll appreciate it. That's subhanallah. So how much do we think of our real life? How much do you think of your real life, right? You can do a practice at home in your life and see for yourself. Uh, you know, we've been having these lectures for two weeks now, right? Two weeks we've been having lectures. So let's analyze these two weeks. Other than this speech, when you're listening to me, <laughs> how much of your time have you spent thinking about your real life? And that is with the month of Ramadan, with the fact that you're fasting, with the fact that Allah's mercy is there, shaitan is locked up, and you're hearing speeches about life. And still, we don't. Tell me, what can be done? What can be done to us? What do we need to wake up and look at our real life? And stop living in a uh, foolish dream. Thinking that this is real. Allah says, He says, this life of this world is nothing but a game. Don't take it seriously. How much of us are concerned about our real life? That is where we are headed towards. You know, I, you know, really want to speak about the height of life you know we i touched on about it yesterday you know just to give you a dose and that's where the excitement comes in and that's where we're going to go and the height of life is what we achieve from life we know we're going to live forever but how do you want to live what way do you want to live what do you want to become you see all of that that achievement that you want to be where is that decided? Where is that made? What you're going to be in Jannat, whether you're going to be with Imam Hussein or not, where is all that decided? Where is all that eternity decided? In 70 years? 80 years? That's it. In this life that you have is where your eternity is decided. This is where this life gets its value from. When you look at the height. Allah, all of that, I'm going to decide right here. This is it. What does that mean then? That if all of that is going to be decided here in this limited amount of time, then what is the one thing that we need to really know about? That really need to just, you know, become like that. Really, number one thing that we should have in our mind while living is that I am short of time. I am short of time. There's nothing more precious than time here, my friends. Nothing more precious than time. You know, and it's really, really difficult, really amazing to see people who are not afraid of losing time. Of not making their time useful. Allah swears by it when he says, Wal asr, inna linsana lafi khusr. I swear by time that man is in loss. Why? Because they don't have that much time. Here, they don't have that much time. I swear by it. That you all are in loss because you're not taking, making use of it. What are you doing with this time that you have? Make use of it. Imam Sajjad alayhi salam. He says, I wonder at a person. He's saying this. I wonder at a person who gets upset when he loses money but doesn't get upset when he loses time. You know, when Allah speaks about Israf, is it money He's talking about or is it time He's talking about? And we're thinking it's food. <laughs> a 
Allah says, listen, where that food came from, there's a lot more coming. You really think that I'm talking about that when I'm talking about Israf? That you're wasting, you're being extravagant? There's a lot more. I'll give you a lot more than that. But there's one thing I cannot give you here is time. I cannot give you more time. Tell me how important is time now? Right now, our age, our life here. How important it is. And friends, it's precious. It's a gold commodity. It's the most precious commodity that you have. You know, it's the most precious commodity that you have. You know, uh, an example that uh, Ibn Arabi, he's a scholar, passed in his Futuhat al makkiya right? Gives an example that he was in this city, this town that he was in, and there was an ice cellar. You know, in those days they used to make ice. There was an ice cellar, right? And he used to bring the ice out. Now, you know, there's no refrigeration in those days. No refrigeration in those days, right? So ice seller who would come out to sell the ice would bring the ice to the market. And then as soon as he brings the ice to the market, he says, hurry up, buy this ice, buy my capital before it melts away. And he looked at that and he says, this is life in this world. It's going away. Every Moment after moment, second after second, tick tock, tick tock, that's it. It's just ticking away. And here we are, not knowing how to utilize it. Isn't it such a tragedy? It is a tragedy, my friends. Life is exciting. Really, Allah made life exciting if a person knows what life is. He would be like, I don't have time to waste. I don't have time to get involved in petty things, in small things, things that are useless for my hereafter. You look at that and says, why should I get involved in this? Why am I this? No matter what you're involved in, are you learning lessons now? Are you getting those lessons no matter what you're in? Everything should be something that I need something to grow so that I can achieve the most as I can. So this is what life is. My friends, take life seriously. This time that we have right now is precious. And everything falls into perspective. I will explain more. This is obviously, you know, a lot to explain. We have a lot of teachings of Ahlul Bayt regarding this. And I want to get it so that we understand life really well. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us a tawfiq and the blessing to be on the right paths, the wisdom to understand his guidance, hasten the reappearance of our Imam, make us his helper when he comes. Wa akhiru davana and alhamdulillah rabbil alameen. Salawat ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa Oh,